Hey, Elise Pickett here with The Urban Harvest, and today I am going to run you through how to plant corn in your Florida garden. My brother-in-law, Dennis Smith, uh, got me this Taos heirloom uh, blue corn. It came from a friend of his that's been in their pueblo out in New Mexico for generations, hundreds, thousands of years. Um, so when he asked me to plant this, I was, I was pretty stoked and honored. It's going to be uh, really interesting to be able to grow these out. Um, Dennis is going to tell you a little bit about where he got them and the intention behind planting this corn here today. So we're going to be planting um, some special corn seeds actually, to me at least, that uh, I received from a native friend of mine uh, at a festival down in Sarasota and he was offering these uh, to basically pay tribute to anyone who wanted to do things the old-fashioned way, a little slower, take your time, and actually be present with the process of not only planting, but nurturing something to its harvesting stage or its completion. So this was this is the reminder of this corn, is to just do everything with intention and uh, yeah, live life that way. I am just a tad bit late on this planting. I usually would try to get these in the ground a little earlier, sometime in August, um, but it is the beginning of September. Um, I, I'm pretty comfortable with the window I have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this corn planted. Getting corn started is not that difficult. It is a grass um, grain, um, which are usually pretty hardy, pretty resilient, and fast growing. So um, when you go to plant it in blocks, just keep in mind that they will grow big and tall. You're gonna need at least a foot between each plant. Um, and depending on your setup, you may want to do two seeds per spot just to make sure that you do have a continuous patch. If uh, say one seed doesn't germinate or whatnot, um, you may end up with a gap that needs to be filled afterwards. So if you're planting directly into the beds, you may wanna go with two per spot and thin afterwards. When planting the corn, um, you're just going to dig half an inch to an inch into the soil. You're going to want to do it in a square or rectangular pattern, giving them about a foot to a foot and a half in between each plant. So once you get these planted, um, you're just going to cover them up, make sure they have adequate water, and within two to three days you should have uh, germination. You'll see the sprouts coming up. Looks like a blade of grass. If you did plant two seeds per spot, uh, once the plants reach six inches or so, I'd go ahead and thin uh, the weaker of the two plants out. Go ahead and get rid of those and then continue growing the plants out. Uh, monitor for pests and other than that, you should be good to go on your corn. One of the things that I have seen in the past um, working with clients is that you don't plant enough corn. So corn do need to cross pollinate. So you can't just have one plant or really even two plants. Um, it's gonna need to be in a block of at least four, if not more. Um, otherwise you're going to run the risk of only getting maybe an ear or none at all. So make sure you do have a plot in your garden set aside that can hold a large track of corn. Um, you do want it all together um, so that they're able to easily cross pollinate. I wanted to speak a moment on heirloom and what that means and what it can do for you as a gardener. So I always preach using heirloom varieties um, because they're selected or can be selected for your climate. They can be passed down through generations like in this situation. Um, and what happens is the seed is selected for a particular trait over time. So this isn't um, science creating an instant fix. It's not taking 
plant tissue from an eggplant and putting it into a corn plant. This is a farmer or gardener going out into their garden and saying, well, this pepper plant produced 10 times the amount of peppers as this pepper plant, so I'm going to save the seed from the one that produced more. Or maybe there was a variety that was more flavorful or that handled our Florida rains more. Um, and those traits are what the gardener or farmer saves seed from to plant in his garden the following season. And when this happens, you get plants that are incredibly well suited to that particular climate or growing condition. All of the varieties that I send out in my seed club are always heirloom varieties that are selected for our climate and growing conditions here in Florida. Um, so it's just a way to start the tradition of you saving your own seed and passing down those heirloom varieties to other gardeners in your areas. If you haven't heard about the Florida Seed Club, go ahead and check out the link below and that'll tell you all of the details and how you can sign up. If you'd like uh, me to do another more in-depth video on heirloom varieties and what they can offer you in your garden, uh, leave me a comment below as well. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button so that you're alerted every time a new video comes out weekly. And I look forward to growing with you this fall season.